through cyberspace. cyberspace. I'm not yet full. <laughs> and I'm not yet tipsy. Welcome to our library. Right now, as we're filming, it's nearing the end of August, and you know what that means. Dragon Con! And we're not going this year. I know. I know. I don't know. Maybe you guys don't know about Dragon Con. Let me, let me inform you about the magic of Dragon Con. When we first went, it was 2005. Five, mm -hmm. Yeah, because it was right after Katrina. And we didn't know each other. We didn't know each other then. It was kind of weird um, to find out later that was actually our first Dragon Con. But Just it has grown... Together. It has grown from three hotels uh, from when we first started going. Three hotels of fun stuff and, and different tracks and anything and everything that could have a cult following to five hotels and two uh, like affiliated buildings, I think. Yeah, it's, it's gotten big. Um, I think last year when we went, it was like 85,000 people. That's the numbers I heard anyhow. Yeah. And anything and everything, we're not kidding, anything and everything is there. So if you're into Star Wars, Star Trek, they got that. If you're into any authors and books, they may have your author there. They have pro wrestling. If you're into music, they have concerts ongoing almost all the time. They got a track from the um, Electronic Frontier Forum, which uh, a lot of that is actually got, deals with hacking, which is, you find quite, we have found quite interesting. Um, there's also anime. There's um, astronomy, astrology, fortune telling, um, history, history, uh, weapons museum. Yeah, I know you like that one. Weapons museum. Mm -hmm. They have a little weapons museum. Well, it's not that little. It's just they they try to pack a lot of stuff in a little space because that's all they've got there. But when we say this thing has gotten huge, it really has. And we have our visitor back. I think this is going to be a running theme. <laughs> It is amazing. I think it's probably one of the biggest cons in the South, at least. Uh, I mean, oh, wow. We are, we are going to be inundated. Um, <laughs> at least the other two are up there. <laughs> thank you, cameraman. <laughs> we, we have more than one cat. We have two more that are off screen, and probably they'll be up soon enough if these two get enough attention. Um, yeah. Hi, Peaches. <laughs> it is a fun, fun event. Now, cost. It is a huge con. Um, I'm pretty sure it runs like Thursday to Monday mm -hmm. of Labor Day weekend. I know that people get there on Wednesday and start partying. Yeah. Oh, yes. Because it is a geek party 24-7. Yes, the, awesome. the parties there that I will say are epic. It's <laughs> like you get into a hotel and you'll find rooms having parties. There'll be people with flyers. The con itself has dances and stuff as well. I mean, it's just crazy on how much there is to do and is to see. I mean, all the cosplays even. Mm -hmm. It's just way, way, way too much to really describe in a short sitting. I mean, definitely, if you're interested, go to DragonCon.com. Org. Org. Whoa! Go to DragonCon.org and look up for yourself. The prices for the tickets are the cheapest right after DragonCon ends. Yes. And the hotels, no matter what get booked up fast. When I say fast, I mean I tried to get a hotel this year just in case we could go. And I called 20 seconds after the hotel block opened and they were already sold out. Unless, of course, you want to stay at the Savannah Suites. No. I don't think they're called that anymore either. I think they changed their name. It may have. Uh, but it's about four blocks from the con and it's a very interesting neighborhood. And very inexpensive. Yeah, usually you can get a whole weekend uh -oh. at the that hotel for the price of one night at the con hotel, but you do uh -oh. have to walk. As long as uh -oh. you don't mind drug dealers and I'm homeless folks you. and street poets. Yeah. So, with that said, we definitely will miss it. Um, so, I know, I know we were saying that our first year was 2005. Mm -hmm. What do you remember from 2005? considering how much I drank. No, no, no. I, I remember getting in, and I think the first actual panel I remember seeing was uh, on theatrical swordplay, which was very interesting to watch on how that is done. I remember it being a lot smaller than last year. It was only within a couple, three hotels. It wasn't that, you know, you didn't have to walk near as far for things. The vendors' rooms, of course, were amazing. I mean, they had lots of stars there doing autographs. Trying to remember everything I went to. It was a long time ago, and I'm old. 
I know mine, mine was probably a little bit more memorable, but not for the con side. You know, just thinking about what do I remember? I don't remember a I lot. I know Katrina happened. Yeah, that's what I remember. My friends and I were going to go up, and my boyfriend at the time, we were going to go, well, down, not up, to Dragon Con. And there was some concerns that gas prices were yes. going to skyrocket, like so, 5 $6 a gallon. Oh, eight. Eight is what I had heard. My story about that, my mother was trying to tell me not to go. I'd already made, <laughs> got the tickets, made reservations. I said, I'm going. And then she asked me this question. What happens if you get there and you get stuck? Well, considering I was single at the time, I said, well, I'd do anything any young man my age would do. I'd, you know, find a job, find a nice girl, place to live, maybe start a family. You know, all those things you do when you get stuck in a remote location from home. But I remember at that time, my boyfriend was going to drive us and, and some friends to Atlanta. And some controversy kind of came up between him and his family, and they really didn't want him to drive. We already had the hotel reservation. We already had said we were going to go and chip in for the hotel room. So it, it just didn't seem fair that we didn't go, especially since people were counting on us for the, the room split. And yeah, you, you do need to split the room cost. They are not Unless cheap. you're independently wealthy. Hmm. And then you can invite us to go and we'll stay with you. But because of that, we wound up taking someone else's car down there. It was a lot of fun. It was stressful. I remember watching the news footage from Katrina as I'm unpacking in the hotel room because we had a hotel error in our favor. We wound up getting a corner suite rather than just a regular room. It actually worked out great because there were a lot of people in that room. I still remember the looks on my boyfriend's friend's faces, some of which I hadn't met before until that day. And I rolled in with like two big suitcases and a bag with clothes and all this other, I mean, just tons of stuff. And I think they were looking at me like, what kind of diva did he drag in? And then I unzipped the suitcases and pulled out things you probably shouldn't have in a hotel room, like a hot plate and <laughs> strainers and pots and food. And I mean, I basically made food every single night that we were there cut costs down dramatically. I'm not going to advocate that because I don't think the hotel's like you doing that. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen. <laughs> well, but and I, I remember the dealer's room to a point. I think now that I've been to more conventions, I do focus more on the dealer's room. And the dealer's room at Dragon Con has just exploded <laughs> in the past, I guess it'll be 13 years this year, 13 years. It has just become massive. Whereas before it was in a ballroom at one hotel that I remember. I mean, my memory may be fuzzy, too. And I know you remember another place. And it's, it's I downstairs. It was downstairs from the first vendor's room. It was in the same hotel, though. We, I don't remember that one as much. I do remember one of them. I think I was just so overwhelmed and so blown away because that was the biggest con I'd ever been to. Before that, we're talking less than a couple thousand people attending. <laughs> Dragon Con was huge. For me and so seeing all the cosplays and seeing the different things just definitely kind of blew me away I was I was just in awe and in shock so yeah anyhow my second year was 2010 and mm -hmm. I know you didn't go that year but mm -hmm. it was interesting my big story going down there that year was when I was on the way down I drove a convertible and I forgot to reapply sunscreen when I got to the con, I put on a top hat with a set of goggles on it, kind of steampunkish. People said they loved that cosplay. It wasn't much of a cosplay, but then I realized what they were looking at was the raccoon eyes that I had developed. <laughs> and so the idea, I guess, was that they saw me look like I'd you know, been in a flash where it had burnt my face, everything but my eyes, because of the goggles. Mm -hmm. So I think one of my biggest stories, and I'm really bad, I'll look it up and I'll try to put it in the video later. I went... What was it? I guess it was two years ago. We checked into the Western Hotel, and when I got there, I mean, it was backed up. We got there probably around 5 o'clock. Thank you. You're welcome. Because we had stopped at Fry's Electronics because somebody wanted to buy computer parts, and then they took two and a half hours knowing Atlanta traffic. That's fine. I, I regret nothing. 
So we got there a little bit later than I intended and the traffic to get to the unloading area was just backed up, backed up, backed up. So I said, okay, let me run in. The hotel's in my name. I'll run in. You drive the car. You get in line and I'll go register us. So I get in inside. There is a huge line. They have every single desk running. They probably had eight or nine desks or something like that. Every single one of them was running. They were doing the best they could to keep up with the volume of all of us nerds flocking in. There was a line. It was a, we had probably what maybe a thirty minute wait because you were still there. You were still yeah, waiting for the car. Hell, yeah. uh, you were still waiting at the car by the time I got. <laughs> um, but it was a long line, and I happened to be in front of a guy who started talking with me, just chatting and whatnot, and he. I just realized just from the way he was talking and how he was presenting certain things, I'm like, oh, he's a presenter here at Dragon Con of some sort. Okay, got to talking more. He's an artist. Cool, art is neat. Oh, well, what would you draw? Well, have you ever heard of the Red Box Dungeons and Dragons? I used to own it. I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I have. And he's like, oh, I drew that artwork. I, I mean, I was shell shocked. I was trying not to be a complete uh, uh, for the rest of the time I was standing in line with this guy. Um, I did wind up finding him later in the dealer's room, and we got a print from one of our friends and signed by him. So that was really kind of cool. Yep. So that was that was a fun time. Mm -hmm. um, last year, last year you were in a wheelchair because yeah. of injuries, and I remember I was cosplaying Zaniba from Spirited Away. Not seen it. It's a good movie. Look it up. And you were no face. Mm -hmm. And we had rigged up so it covered the whole wheelchair. It was really kind of cool. And we happened to be going through one of the main lobbies. And all of a sudden we see all these other Studio Ghibli anime characters. And we're like, oh! And we kind of ran over and totally crashed their little photo area. <laughs> but it was really neat because there were like uh, Princess Mononoke's. There was a Totoro. That was the big draw. There was us. I think there was an Arietti. Yep. I think there, yeah. And yeah, it was it was just really neat. It's there is so much cosplay there, and it's always amazing to see not only how cool the costumes look, because there are some really epic costumes that are like ten feet tall, and you don't know how they got through the doors or anything like that, but they did. Um, and then there are some that are just so creative. Like some of the mashups. I think those are really mm -hmm. fun to see. Now let's uh, see. Not the cosplay as much, but the, I think it was the year before though still. Uh, where we went to Hacking 201. I went to 101 and she went to 201 with me. And all the look on her face when we left there seeing it, asking me, how can you sleep knowing these things? It was terrifying just to know how vulnerable everything is now that we're all online so much. It actually is kind of scary. And now she wants to go back to Hacking 101 and 201 every year, right, huh? Uh, maybe. <laughs> There's just so many things that we really like to do. And unfortunately, the way Dragon Con is now, when it's spread over this many locations, and there's so much stuff to do and so much stuff that you want to see, it's really hard to get to see everything. I mean, for the bigger panels, they start lining up and as soon as the last panel goes in the room and they shut the doors, they start lining for the next panel. And it's, you know, if it's a big panel, like if it's the Game of Thrones cast. That, like 2010, I went to see that. Um, let's see, was that Game of Thrones? Mm, I might have, no, I know I've seen the True Blood uh, during <laughs> that time. I know there was one year that I did see uh, to get some of the Game of Thrones cast members as well. Yeah, um. but Game of Thrones, last year we went to the Alton Brown panel, you know, because of those types of draws, guaranteed, if you're not there as soon as the door closes for the panel before, you ain't getting in. It's insane. I mean, people will line up, and they will disperse the line. If you're too early, they're going to be like, no, 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 move along. But if you don't get there on time, they're going to really, you're going to be like stuck at the back, maybe not get in. It's insane. And even though they put the big draws like Game of Thrones or Supernatural or even Autumn Brown in the biggest ballrooms they have, it still is never enough space. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And the biggest problem is, I know last year there were a couple of things we wanted to do that were kind of like back to back with an hour apart, but just navigating <laughs> from one hotel to the other, you know, from this side of this hotel over to the complete opposite one, it there was just no way. And considering last year I was in a wheelchair, we definitely want to give a shout out to those folks in the disabilities uh, assistance folks. They were fantastic. Great they were help. really well. Um, one of the staff, actually, we were trying to get to a panel. I kept telling someone we needed to leave before the parade started, um, but we had trouble getting through the crowd to get to where we could get in a hotel to go see the panel. And there was a great staff who really helped make way through the crowd that was gathered on the sidewalk so that we could go and get to the hotel. And there were some not so nice people. I'm not sure if they were Dragon Con attendees, because usually Dragon Con attendees are pretty cool. Yeah. There were a couple who weren't very nice and really smart math to her, and I will give her credit. She held her own, and she pointed out that she wasn't doing this for herself. She was doing it for someone else, and she really was a great advocate. I don't think we had any harsh words from anybody, even with like elevator usage. People right. who maybe have been waiting there for 20, 30 minutes maybe stopped and were like, nope, nope, he goes first. So I thought that was just really awesome. There, there really is a great vibe right. in that community. And then speaking of the parade, oh boy, it's a spectacle <laughs> you don't want to miss. That's true. From the Cult of the Marriott Carpet, and if you don't know about the Cult of the Marriott Carpet, you will learn. You will learn. <laughs> Just look it up online. It's an amazing story. It really is. There's also people who come down with like bat cars or the Ghostbuster Mobile or, you know, just... The periodic uh, table. Yes, the periodic elements. Those are so cool. I mean, again, fun cosplays. Really cool. Stormtroopers. Oh, the 501st is represented well mm -hmm. there because they have stormtroopers and the, the Imperial Guards and Darth Vader's and... Oh yeah, it's it's really awesome. Um, I think I'm gonna miss that this year. That's that's a lot of fun. I just I love the cosplays. I love being in cosplay. I love seeing everybody else's cosplay because there's so much creativity that goes in it, and there's so much love and time and attention that you know I really have to respect it as a cosplayer, as somebody who makes her costumes. It's it's intense to see what they do. I sometimes walk in and feel like wow, I didn't spend this much time or money. I'm cute. <laughs> and that's about all I can say because it, it really is awesome and amazing. What, what are you going to miss this year? Just uh, being able to go through the, the uh, different uh, things. I'm, I mean, there's so many panels that we, I'd love to go see, and it's like there's things that I didn't get to see last year because of things. I'd like They do the same thing again this year, some of them, and I'd like to go see those panels. Definitely going to miss the Hacking 101 and 201 and uh, because those are good. Uh, a lot of good talks from the EFF, the Electronic Frontiers Forum. Let's see. I mean, it's just... Well, you also like... The gaming the area. gaming areas too, yep. Yeah. Because they've got a lot of role playing. They even have demo games. Demo games. Too. And they also have video gaming tournaments there. And I'm not good enough for that. <laughs> definitely miss the meetups, especially the home brewing and such. Well, the home brewing, the craft beer, you Cigars. like the cigar. There's always like some sort of little meetup that, that's going on. And you meet some great people who have similar interests. And you just hear about these things through the grapevine. So, definitely worth checking out. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping we get to go next year. we got a couple of friends who are wanting to go. And so, hopefully, that we can bring the cost of the room down a little bit. Because it gets very pricey. <laughs> no lie. It gets really pricey. It is a lot of fun. It's more yes. fun to go with friends. Especially have similar interests. And I have been there by myself twice. I, I find it more fun to go with friends who have similar interests because then you can talk about a panel afterwards and kind of, you know, go, oh man, that was really cool. Or, you know, they didn't even touch on this. So, I, you know, it's I think it's great to share that experience. But in a way, it's kind of cool. You can go off and do your own thing and your friends can do their own thing. And you might not see each other for 15 hours. <laughs> 
I guess though, I, I, I'm starting to get a little desiring of some alcohol. Oh, so you're getting thirsty and I'm getting hungry. Mm. Well, I guess it's that time to go then. Well, we will mosey on down to the RAV4 and uh, we'll meet you all at uh, Ghostface. Have a good one. Take care. Ghostface Brewery in Mooresville, North Carolina. Um, this is a place we actually discovered with our friend who's not here yet. He's going to come out in a minute. We discovered it kind of by accident, just through a Google search a while back um, when we couldn't figure out what we were going to eat one night. Right. <laughs> so we said, hey, why don't we try this place out? It's got good ratings. And we were just blown away by the um, selection of beers and the food. And so we've been coming back here for a while, so we wanted to open with our inaugural episode here at Ghostface. Right now, what we have in front of us, we have a small flight of beers. This is a Dirty Girl. This is a Dirty Girl IPA. This is Celebration IPA, I believe. That's a no. pink, hibis pink and hibiscus. Pink. Yep. And, and a milk stout. A milk stout. Pardon me if I lift my fingers. So, since I'm the tipsy one, I guess I better go first. So, I will say, IPAs are not my favorite. I really don't like the bitterness, but I'm gonna try them for you guys because I gotta get tipsy somehow, right? So, cheers. Cheers. That is an IPA I can tolerate. I like that. It's really smooth going down. It's not too bitter. Do you have that hop flavor? Don't don't think there's not a hop flavor, but there is. It's almost creamy going down here. Why don't you try something? Sure. Now I only live in love IPAs. <laughs> it's kind of creamy going down. It's very heavy on the tongue. Very creamy. Not real hoppy, but it's good. No. It does have that hop there. You definitely get more of like I think an orange. Mm -hmm. It's very almost pronounced orange flavor to me. Um, somebody else might taste something different. Sure. I think he likes it. Yeah. Oh, I love IPA, so there's that. <laughs> Go ahead and tipsy. Get you started today. There's definitely almost a pine flavor at the front end. That is hops. Hops taste kind of piney and citrusy. I get that. Sorry, I'm not going to get too tipsy on that one. <laughs> so this one... It takes a while for me to get tipsy, so... This one, are you sure it's the score? No, it's Suicide Squeeze. Suicide Squeeze, sorry. Blood, orange, and wheat. So cheers, guys. Ooh. I don't know, I guess I'm not picking up on the blood orange. This one's not quite as heavy on the tongue. It's a little bit more crisp very dry and the flavor doesn't last that long in the mouth actually which is okay I'm all right with this there is a citrus flavor there I, I don't think I'd recognize it as blood orange that's here. 
it's definitely lighter on the it's, tongue. Yes, the, the, it's not as citrusy, but I do taste that little orange in the mid part of the, of the taste. Yeah. It's a little. It's, it's not. Yeah, it's not as strong as the other one. All right, so the food just came. We're gonna have to hurry. I'm thinking. <laughs> All right, it's actually rather good. I do like that. Also creamy. Yeah, but it just, to me, it doesn't have that weight on the tongue like the last one did. Sure. The last one was really heavy. These are fantastic. Um, as you'll see in the video, the butter. Just drip. <laughs> They're amazing and awesome. Okay, so maybe, so maybe our friend isn't going to join us. He's now behind the camera and he's trying out on us. So we're going to try some of these garlic knots because we already know how good they are. Do you want the top half or the bottom half? On top. I like the bottom half because you can do this mm. and soak up all the butter. <laughs> they are good. I may have made a miscalculation on how much butter. <laughs> I also have a dip to go with these as well. Hey guys, I just broke out from across the street. Just come join you. Nice. <laughs> I don't even think I'm in the shop. Nope. Alex said he can fix that. That's right. There you go. He's full of his tipsy. He's full, I get tipsy. Okay. We know me. We know my tolerance. <laughs> Did you get the milk set? Um, I got the skull cutter Scotch Ale. Oh, neat. So, awesome. I, I highly recommend it. Do you want some of these garlic knots? I, you know they, they're fantastic. I know they're fantastic. <laughs> I live so, here. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and start with cheese. Yeah, we probably should start with the cheese pizza. Holy. So the so the folks here at Ghost Face has definitely brought us a, a variety of pizzas. They first brought us out their cheese pizza. So we're going to go ahead and start out with, of course, the plain cheese pizza, which is going to be... You know, and honestly, you can tell a lot about a place by their cheese pizza, because if their cheese pizza tastes like... Then you know the rest of them aren't going to be as great. Mm. Mm, it's very good. Mm -hmm. The one thing I do like about their pizza is the crust is done all the way to the middle. It's really crisp, so you definitely get that good bite and chew of a good pizza dough, which is fantastic. It's definitely a blend of cheeses. It has to be. It's definitely not just mozzarella on top of cheese. Yeah. The sauce good. is the sauce isn't too sweet. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit uh, got a little tart to it. Ooh, I think I got some red pepper in that one. That's good. That washes it down good as well. Does it? Mm -hmm. It was pretty good, but yeah. I don't think this is my favorite so far, but it's still good. I tend to go for sweeter beers, um, more of the reds, more of the browns. Usually not milk stouts, but I'm gonna try it. I want to love milk stouts. All right, ready to move on to another beer? No, I'm not. I've got my mouth full of dough. I'm gonna do it myself. <laughs> Here is a pink biscuit. I think you'll like this one. Not real hoppy at all. Oh, Don't put it back. Mm. Ooh. How do you like it? Yeah, that's a little bit floral, a little bit sweet. Not too sweet. It's not going to be like, oh, I'm drinking a soda. No. It's got a little bitter aftertaste, which is kind of good because I think that'll cut through the cheese factor and the butter. Oh, that butter. I'm waiting for it to start solidifying in the pan. All right, let's try this. And this was the Vida Loca. It said this has got uh, chorizo and fresh jalapenos. It looks really good. He it said it's more of a Mexican inspired. Cheers. Very good. Mmm. Mmm. Really wow. Good well, there's jalapenos there. Mm. Jalapenos give it just a little bit of bite. The chorizo's got a little bit of um, the heat, too. It almost has a yeah. bacon flavor for you guys who like yep. bacon. It does. But imagine a bacon that's spicy. Definitely can use a chase it. Oh, there's the heat. There's those jalapenos. Yeah, it's definitely in there. I think I think that IPA would go really good with this because the cheese is a lot richer and fattier. This not go bad with it either. Kind of counters that bite. Burn a little bit. 
I think the weight, though, of that IPA would coat the tongue better and just, it should have done that. Those jalapenos do give a heck of a kick, mm -hmm. and they are a slow burn, mm -hmm. and they build. <laughs> They're all good. They are really good. If you don't like spicy foods, stay away from no. it. If you like a little bit of heat and a lot of flavor, this is definitely this is really good. Definitely taste. How you feeling there, Tipsy? Not yet, Tipsy. We'll have to keep going. We really need a menu because I can't remember what this one's called. Oh, I know which one it is. Arusa Sativa. Arusa Sativa. Okay. So we have here the, the final one that they got for us. We get Arusa Sativa. As you can see, there's a lot of arugula on here. There's goat cheese. There's prosciutto. On top of this, there's also a balsamic glaze. It looks really good. I think he even said that the um, arugula was organic. So if you're really concerned about that, they, they really think about that. So it got carbon in it. That goes out to our science nerds. <laughs> All right. It's good. It's definitely different. Hmm. Not what I'm used to with most pizzas. Mm -hmm. Most people see me with a pepperoni pie, but these have been so delicious today. Yeah. The arugula definitely gives that fresh kind of peppery bite. And the balsamic glaze is extremely sweet. So you got a little bit of salty and sweet going on. Um, I don't think I got any prosciutto in that bite. I'm gonna have to go back. I definitely got the goat cheese, and the goat cheese and the balsamic vinegar work really well together. There's the prosciutto. Oh, that's good. If you don't know, prosciutto is like an Italian country style ham. So it's a little bit dry and you shape it really thin. It really gives a nice salt to bite. And the meat flavor is fairly concentrated. It's, I think this is enough on this because you want to enjoy that arugula. You want to enjoy that goat cheese. You don't want to be meat, 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 meat. So it's good. And I got to say, the yeah. crust here is amazing. No, one of the best crusts I've ever had in a pizza. Oh yeah, nice and chewy and crunchy. As a northerner, I have to endorse this pizza. Mm -hmm. We're we very are, particular. We have a resident Yankee here. <laughs> yes, we're in the South, y'all. Gourmet pizza is how I would describe it. Well, I know our normal go-to, these are the ones that um, Ghostface was nice enough to prepare for us as their, you know, star signature ones. We usually get the Wildcat, which is um, sausage and pepperoni and mushrooms and gosh, what else is on there? It's good. Bell peppers, white onions, and mozzarella. So just like your standard supreme pizza, but it's so good. It is very good. Yes. And these are pizzas that I have not tried here before. I think we kind of found the wildcat we've stuck with it. <laughs> we probably shouldn't have. We probably should have ventured out a little more. Well, that's what this whole thing is about, though, here. True. Now for the milk stout. Milk stout. I want to like milk stout. I truly do. But it usually comes off as too bitter for my palate. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm just saying it's not one I would go to. I'm actually kind of shocked because I really did like the IPA and I normally don't. So bottoms up with the milk stout. It's a lot less heavy on the tongue than I expected. It's very light. Definitely got a pronounced coffee flavor to it though. That roasted, roasted, toasted goodness. A little bit of like a cream aftertaste after you swallow and just let it sit on your tongue. It's a little bit of a cream flavor. Try some. It's good. Back to the garlic knot. I love the garlic knot. Definitely milk stout. Much better than the first time I attempted to make a milk stout. We won't discuss that. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. I don't know what got into it during the fermentation or whatever, but when we were aging it, we popped we had a little bit of kegs at the time. And when it popped it open, it smelled like someone farted. It truly did. It was disgusting. Fermentation gone bad. Happens to the best of us. So what do you think of that one? It is very it's light though. Yeah, it's light. Because I'm used to milk stouts being a lot heavier. Not quite tipsy yet, are you? No. I need to try some of their ciders in the mead. So they have a blueberry cider, they have a semi-sweet cider, and cherry bop and troll cider. And I definitely, definitely want to get some of that mead. You guys don't know what mead is. Let me give you a history lesson. So with beer, you're usually taking barley, mark the barley, you put it in water, you cook it, 
you add hops to give it that bitterness. Depending on where you add the hops, how much hops you add, you get different styles what, of beer. What style of hops do a type you yeah. several out there? But that's how you make beer. Wine. To make yeah. wine, you just use fruits usually. Um, or grapes. Grapes are the main one. I mean, there's several ways you can do that as well. Okay, so we had to take a little commercial break because our camera quit on us. <laughs> but um, we're back. And you see we've got two new glasses on here. Ooh. So what we were going to say is the next thing is ciders. Ciders are usually um, apple-based, and they're brewed a lot like a beer. You're going to have that carbonation on it, just like you would a beer. But they're they're usually about as powerful as a regular beer. Um, the one thing I was really looking forward to here, and they're out of today, is mead. Now, mead is an interesting beverage with a good history. It was the drink of kings back in the Middle Ages. Oh, yeah. And if you guys have seen mead in the store, it's probably a name brand I'm not going to mention here, but, but it is super, super sweet. But it does reference a medieval poet who liked to go to Canterbury. So, it's really, really sweet. I, I like the sweeter stuff, but I tend to tend to go more towards the semi-sweet, semi-dry. I really don't like the dry. It's just like a regular wine because it's a wine made of honey. You can have it really sweet. You can have it really dry. I don't really like it super dry because it feels like it's wringing all the moisture out of my tongue. And I don't mind it being that dry. I and mean, I do like semi-dry best, I suppose, but just sweet. If you spice it during winter time and have it serve it warm, I really enjoy it. But as yes. I said, just as a sweet wine, it's not as much my thing. I will say this: if you do get your hands on some of that brand that we're not going to mention, pour that stuff in a pot on the stove. Add some whole spices. Don't you dare use ground spices that you buy from the store. Mm -mm. Whole spices. Whole spices. Put some whole spices in it and just bring it to a simmer and simmer for about 10 minutes. Drink that down. It will get you tipsy as heck. It will put you in a holiday spirit. It is so good. So, um, again, the guys here are super nice. They have brought us two different ciders. We have the Cherry Bob and Trolls. They actually make this one. So, it is an apple cider that has um, cherry in it. Um, I think they say it's Michigan cherries. This is from the brewery Red Clay. From Charlotte. From Charlotte. I think I'm going to try the Red Clay first mm -hmm. because it's not the home brew um, or the house brew, I should say. This, this isn't home brew. We do that at home. <laughs> Ooh, it smells really sweet. Ooh, that's sweet. Sounds that's like almost dessert. dangerous. Oh my goodness. It's it's tart. It's got a little bit of tartness. The alcohol doesn't hit you until after you swallow. It is it's pretty sweet. It's not even a semi-dry, I would say. I don't know, maybe semi-dry. I don't know. It seems really sweet to me. It's good. It tastes like you're drinking sparkling apple juice. Mm. Until you swallow and then the alcohol hits you. <laughs> so I could see this as being very dangerous. If you can ignore the alcohol flavor, this goes down smooth. All right, good for it, Tipsy. I'm not chugging. It is something to say. Before they warm up too much, because it is a little bit warm out here, I'm going to go for the Cherry Bob and Troll. North Carolina. No. Warm? <laughs> humid. It is humid out here. It I don't know if you can see here, the condensation on this glass. It is so humid and so warm here that these things are have just become coated and like even from the time he walked here and set them on the table they were already damp <laughs> and uh, you say they're moist yes they are moist oh, yeah. uh, we had some technical difficulties storage space is running Switching low the, SD storage. the um the camera cut out a couple times so i've actually tried it but i'm going to try it again for you guys i'm going to make it quick okay this one's really good it's semi-sweet it's got the tartness of the cherries it does not have alcoholish flavor. I've had about four sips of it, but I can feel it. I'll let you try real quick. Mm, very, very good from the UK, as you call it. Mm. I didn't smell much with it. I, I tasted a whole lot more than I smelled. Well, that is good. Yeah, it is. It's really good. It's semi-sweet, um, but it definitely, you can taste the tartness of the cherries, and I think that kind of overrides the alcohol flavor that you get with um, a lot of ciders. That one I could probably drink and get myself in a lot of trouble with. <laughs> I would say out of the ciders, I would have to go with Cherry Bob and Trolls. Um, I'm not just saying that because that's the house one. 
I'm saying that because I really like the cherry flavor. It really balances it. Um, the red clay is good. It is a little sweet. So if you like the sweeter ciders, go for it. That was good. Mm-hmm. It was. I'm trying to keep up the tipsy buzz. Yeah. At any rate, we would like to have a special thanks to uh, Chuck at Ghostface Brewery for ha having us there and feeding us and everything. That was really awesome. We weren't expecting that. And we really, really appreciate that. Um, we also want to apologize. We had some technical difficulties. We ran out of storage space, but we're learning as we go because we didn't know how much storage space we'd need <laughs> for that video. So, um, and the camera kind of cut out a couple of times because of other technical issues. If it looks a little choppy and all that, so that's we why. Yeah, we're learning as we go, just like we told you. Um, I have to say, that was really good, getting to try all the different pizzas we had never tried before. Mm -hmm. That was fantastic. I, I was really happy. Oh, with the garlic knots. Oh, oh yes. And of course, we will, in the uh, description of the video, we will also have everything that we have tried there. We will also have the uh, website for uh, Ghostface, and if you ever find yourself in Mooresville, North Carolina, you should stop by and say hi. Grab yourself a beer, have yourself some pizza. And if they have meat, get meat. They try the meat. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's good stuff. I wish they had it today. Well, well you know, say la vie. I guess that's it for today, because I'm full. And I'm tipsy. Have a great time, guys. Take care.